What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at B-Link's newest mini PC offering, known as the SER7 7840HS. This is basically their 2023 model of their SER7, and we have seen some of their uh, GTR7s and GTR9s being released with the Ryzen Phoenix Point APUs, but nothing in the SER line until now. And I do think they've done a really great job with this. We've got an upgraded CPU cooler, so we can keep those clocks on up and that TDP. And they're offering this in a few different colors. Now, the one I have here is their Cray or their Silver version. And uh, they've got a new case design here, which I think looks really, really sleek. Within the last two to three years, B-Link has definitely upped the quality of their mini PCs, at least their higher-end models with the uh, higher-end AMD APUs, and this one's no different. I mean, we've got a metal case here. It's got a little bit of plastic on the upper lid, but uh, overall, I do think it looks really good. Now, inside of the box with this new SCR7, obviously, we're going to get the mini PC. We also get a little bit of a mounting system. We can mount this to a wall or the back of our monitor. It's 6 foot HDMI cable and their new magnetic 90 watt power supply. This was recently introduced with their higher end GTR series. I love the idea here, but it would have been nice if they still added a barrel jack on the back of this, given that, you know, it can pull so much power. We've got that 7000 series APU. Now, this one here can actually be powered over USB Type C using a PD 3.0 charger. But uh, with this new magnetic power supply, it makes it really easy just to get up and running. It's going to magnetically attach right here, and it is flush with the bottom of the unit, at least the rubber feet on the bottom of the SER series. But another thing that B-Link has been doing with their newer mini PCs is offering a few different color variants to choose from. We've got the space gray version, but they also offer a green, an obsidian black, and an orange version. I personally like their orange PCs. I think they look really good, and we don't see many of them on the market. It's a very well-built mini PC. Like I mentioned, most of it is metal, but uh, we've got these little side panels up top that are plastic. It's not going to interfere with anything. All the air is going to be drawn in from the top of this unit and pushed out of the back. And the new Phoenix Point SER7 series is coming in a bit taller than the older SER series from B-Link, given that we have a new cooling system here. It's just a much beefier heatsink for that 7840HS APU. When it comes to I.O. on this new mini PC, up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, USB-C, and this is actually USB 3.2, but don't worry, we've got some USB 4 on here around the rear, and we've also got a full-size USB 3.2 port. Not a lot here on the sides, just some ventilation, but around back we've got a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, two USB 2.0 ports, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, and we've got two USB 4 ports, and both of these will do video out, so we can do a total of four displays on this unit, utilizing the display port, HDMI, and both of those USB 4 ports. Plus, it is using 40 gig protocol, so connecting an eGPU here is quite simple over USB 4. And when it comes to the full specs of the new SER7, for the APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 7840 HS. Based on Zen 4, so we've got 8 Zen 4 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.8 GHz, and a max boost up to 5.1. And since this is a Phoenix Point APU, we've got that Radeon 780M iGPU. It's based on RDNA 3, 12 compute units, and this one runs at up to 2700 MHz. This utilizes 5600 MHz DDR5 RAM, and this has 32 gigs running in dual channel. Two M.2 2280 PCIe 4.0 SSDs can be installed. I've got a single one terabyte here with a free M.2 slot. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11. Now, before we get into testing, I did want to give you a look at the internals because uh, B-Link has been doing some really cool stuff here. Bottom comes off very easily, and as you can see, we've got kind of a secondary fan and cooling system here for the RAM and the M.2 SSDs. The secondary M.2 slot is accessible as soon as we remove the bottom, and uh, the bottom plate is constructed of aluminum. This is what's going to help cool that M.2, but uh, as you can see, they've got a whole system in here with a built-in fan and a heatsink for your primary M.2 SSD. And when we remove that, it'll grant us access to the RAM, DDR5 at 5600 MHz running in dual channel, and our primary M.2 SSD. So it's actually pretty easy to get in here and upgrade that RAM or add extra storage, but I wanted to go a bit deeper and just check out their new cooling system because uh, it is a bit beefier than their older one. And you know, running these at higher TDPs does require a better cooling system. And we want to get the most out of these mini PCs for sure. 
And to me, it looks like they definitely have a beefier all copper heatsink here. It's definitely sitting up a bit taller with that thin array. And uh, they've got a new vapor chamber system sitting right underneath that fan. And in my testing so far, I've actually been able to take this up to around 75 watts without thermal throttling. And uh, that's pretty good for a small form factor PC like this. Okay, so here it is, and uh, yeah, this thing's actually really, really quick. As you can see here, we've got that Ryzen 7 7840HS, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600, running in dual channel, and the Radeon 780M graphics. I've got everything updated, all the drivers, Windows updated, got some benchmarks and games that we're going to be testing out, but the first thing I always like to take a look at is just the TDP that these things are running at right out of the box. With this new B-Link, even though we're working with a very small form factor unit, they have upgraded the CPU cooler, and it's definitely capable of more. But right out of the box, if I just run this stress test with CPU-Z from core temp, you can see it jumps up to 54 watts. And that's kind of normal here for these mini PCs. But I've been doing a little bit of tweaking with this, and we can actually take it up quite a bit. So using something like Universal x86 Tuning Utility, a custom option here, I've actually taken it up to 70 watts. I'll go ahead and apply. And remember, out of the box, it's at 54. Now, when I run this stress test, you'll see this jump up to 70 watts. And at 70 watts, it will stay here. And I haven't seen this thing thermal throttle. This is actually set up for 95 degrees Celsius. Right now, we're putting a pretty big load on it, you know, with all eight cores maxed out here. But while gaming, these aren't going to be maxed out all the time. So you'll see lower temps. And of course, at those higher TDPs, we can definitely see more performance out of this because we can send more wattage to the CPU and GPU at the same time. And through my testing at that 70 watt TDP, this is an amazing performing mini PC when it comes to gaming. Now, 70 watts for normal everyday desktop use is definitely overkill, but we want the higher clocks on the CPU and GPU while gaming. And the first thing I wanted to show off here were some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. And keep in mind with these benchmarks, we were at a 70 watt TDP. When it comes to Geekbench 6, single core, 2,607, multi, 12,359. Really nice scores here. Checking out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. For Night Raid, we got a 31,013, Fire Strike, 7,495, and Time Spy, 3,190. Getting real close to that 3300, which was kind of my highest score on a 7940HS. And if we could get this RAM a bit faster, we could definitely get up there. But the way it is right now, sitting at that 70 watt TDP, this thing is offering some really great gaming performance. And the first game we're going to be testing here is Spider-Man Miles Morales. I do have V-Sync on because it really helps out. And as you can see, I mean, it'll fluctuate between 59 and 60, but it's something you'll never notice. We're at 1080p low settings, FSR is set to balance, and we're getting some great performance here. Now I will tell you with V-Sync off, this is in the lower 80s, but we get dips way under 60 that way, it kind of overruns itself. So keeping V-Sync on with this on an iGPU is the way to go. Here's Street Fighter 6, we're at 1080p medium settings, great performance with fighting games on these uh, Phoenix Point APUs, I've had really good luck. Mortal Kombat 11, medium, 1080p. You want to do some Street Fighter 5 at 1440p high, it'll run it great. And even Injustice 2, 1080p, medium, you can run it at 60 all day. I mean, you can get some really great performance with fighting games on these new APUs. Here's Doom Eternal, 1080p, medium settings. Ray tracing is completely off. I mean, obviously, we don't want to be running it on this iGPU here. It'll take performance way down. And I'm not using any resolution scale, so we're at a true 1080 here. And yeah, this is just one of those games that does perform quite well on an APU. We got an average of 72 FPS out of this one. And if you don't mind dropping it down to 900p, you can get an average of 90. Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p, medium settings, FSR set to balance. We can get an average of around 65 FPS, even in this wide open area out here. Got a lot of stuff going on, uh, all of the scatter and everything like that. Still looks great, even with FSR set to balanced, and it's fully playable. Again, with a lot of these games, just taking it down to 900p and not using FSR sometimes makes them look a little better, and you can actually get much better performance out of them. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, we can get an average of around 77 FPS, and this seems to be kind of on par with other 7000 series APUs we've tested. But one thing I can't stress enough is, this is true low settings, 
if you go to the preset and just turn it to low, we've still got some of those settings at medium. So you need to go through and kind of just take them right down. You can see some great performance out of this. So overall, I mean, with the new cooling system, more power from that RDNA 3 APU, the new SCR7 with the 7840HS is a really powerful mini PC. And if you're interested in power consumption, I did some testing, but I do have it set at a 70 watt TDP. So at idle, we're around 13 watts. Average gaming jumps up to around 76. Most of these games at 1080p low don't need to pull a full 70 watts. And the maximum that I could get this to pull in my extreme test was 88 watts. Remember, the power supply we have here is a 90 watt power supply, but this will do a 100 watt PD charger over USB type C. So if you want to see this with a little more thrown at that CPU, let me know in the comments below. Not bad at all for one of these Phoenix Point powered mini PCs, and I really do like the design, and the fact that we can actually choose a few different colors is also nice. I like the gray and the orange, some people might be into that green or obsidian black, but in the end, it's going to be up to personal preference. Now, if there's anything else you want to see running on the new SCR7, if you want to see higher TDP, or even an Oculink eGPU or USB 4 Thunderbolt 3 Thunderbolt 4 eGPU, let me know in the comments below, and if you're interested in learning a little more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave links to B-Link's official website down below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.